Hi everyone, I'm Claire, and welcome to my channel. I published a book while I was in high school, and today, I'm gonna tell you how I did that. Before we get started though, I have a very exciting announcement, which is that I have a giveaway live right now. To celebrate the cover reveal of my upcoming young adult thriller, They Stay, I am giving away four Karen McManus thrillers. Four lucky readers will win one of the following hardcover books, as well as a reader care package filled with bookmarks and hard candies and other reader care packagey stuff. The books I'm giving away are One of Us is Lying, One of Us is Next, The Cousins, and two can keep a secret. I'm super excited about this giveaway. I hope you are too. I've put the link in the description of this video to go enter. So if you're interested in being one of the four winners of the giveaway, definitely go put your email address down in the form and enter the giveaway. So let's get into the video. I published a book in high school called Imperfect. Imperfect is a young adult dystopian fiction novel that I started writing when I was 13, finished writing when I was 15, then I turned 16 in June of that year and published Imperfect in July when I was 16 through Amazon's Create Space publishing. Over the next year or so, I marketed the book and then I stopped my marketing efforts because I was applying to colleges and stuff. In this video, I'm going to break down everything that I did while publishing the book. I'll also give you some pointers on things that I would do differently now, but these topics like marketing and publishing are extremely broad, so I'm gonna make videos going more in depth later on. I'm not gonna go into the pros and cons of all the different ways that you can publish and all the different ways that you can distribute and market. If you are interested in any videos about any particular topics pertaining to this process, leave me a comment down below and I will add it to my list. But this is just gonna be focused on what I actually did. So the first thing that I did is that I wrote the book. I came up with the idea for and wrote Imperfect because I was obsessed with a lot of young adult dystopians when I was in middle school. I was a super big fan of The Hunger Games, I was a super big fan of Divergent and The Maze Runner. I honestly didn't think that I could get any more obsessed with these books, like I was making fan art, I was writing fan fiction, I would stay up late at night and look at fan art that other people had made of my favorite characters, because my fan art just wasn't very good. I wanted to channel the love that I had for these kind of stories into a story of my own. When I was writing Imperfect, I did not know as much about the technical process of writing as I do now. I just wrote a story that I liked. I didn't care about story structure, I didn't pay attention to word count. I didn't work with critique partners, although my best friend at the time did read a lot of the chapters I was writing. My dad read it after it was done, and I just decided that I wanted to publish it. The story was complete at about 104,000 words, and I just wanted to get it out there. I actually really recommend this type of writing process when you're writing as a teen. On the internet and in courses and on YouTube, there's just so much stuff about how to learn how to write. There are videos on different parts of writing, there are courses on different parts of writing. There's just so much information that it can kind of feel overwhelming when you're trying to synthesize it all and write a story of your own. But when you're learning how to write, I really advise not paying attention to most of that and just doing your best to try to write the best story that you can on your own. You can watch a couple of these videos, but just don't get too obsessed with writing the perfect book and just write a book that you like. Because believe it or not, you are gonna learn more by just writing a book that you like than obsessing over every single detail of a story that you want to be perfect. Because it means that you'll actually probably finish the story that you're writing. My goal in publishing Imperfect was not to make it a bestseller or to try to make a name for myself. I wanted to have the experience of publishing and learn how to market books and connect to my audience by doing it. I also had just genuinely written a story that I loved and I wanted to share it with people. If you are watching this video because you're also a teen writer who wants to publish a book, I would recommend putting some thought into why you want to publish that book. Don't just publish for the sake of publishing. Do you just want to publish your book because you want to share it with people? Do you want to start publishing now because you want to learn how to market? Do you want to start publishing now so that you can start building a community and meeting other writers? Once you figure out exactly why you want to publish, set some goals around that. What are you going to do after you self-publish the book? How much marketing do you want to do? Do you want to use this book as a way to learn how to market? Is your goal to go into traditional publishing someday? Are you planning to continue self-publishing after publishing this book and publish different series? I've heard that series often work better when self-publishing because you can use the momentum of different books coming out to market your series, but that also might not be what you want from this experience. There is no right answer here and you are absolutely at the very beginning of your career, so just figure out why you want to do this. Something you could consider if you didn't want this book to be attached to you in any way is using a pen name to publish. If you want to pursue publishing in the future and you're worried that this book is going to hang over your head like a dark cloud, you might want to use a pen name. I personally didn't use a pen name and it hasn't hurt me at all, but if it's something you're worried about and you would want to start using your real name when you publish books later on, then you could do that. 
if you just wanted to get that marketing experience and to get yourself out there. The second thing I did is that I decided on a publishing platform. I used Amazon's Create Space to publish Imperfect, which made self-publishing really easy. This is now KDP. You can publish pretty much anything on KDP. I didn't know about these at the time, but now I know that there are many different options for distributing your book. You can use distributors like Ingram Spark or draft to digital but KDP was honestly perfect for my purposes. Because I didn't use a distributor, Imperfect is only available on Amazon. I also enrolled Imperfect in KDP Select, which means that it is part of the program Kindle Unlimited, which would allow people with a Kindle Unlimited subscription to read the book for free, which also makes the book exclusive to Amazon. Publishing exclusively on Amazon was very good for Imperfect, because I was publishing the book because I wanted to share it and I wanted to dip my toes in the water and learn more about publishing and how to connect with other people around a book. But there are a lot of things to consider when you choose a distributor. You can publish wide and publish your book on platforms that are not just Amazon and also other retailers, but being exclusive on Amazon and enrolling in a program like KDP Select could be really good if the target audience of your book has a lot of people who say own Kindles and would be enrolled in a program such as KDP Select. When you choose a publishing platform, you wanna go back to those goals that you set before. If you're like me and are publishing because it's a learning experience and you wanna get your story out there, you don't have to go crazy as far as distributors. You might wanna consider starting with one distributor and then maybe going wide later. Ease into it and start to understand exactly how all the different publishing platforms work. Then the third thing I did was that I edited the book through Amazon. I used CreateSpace's built-in cover design, line editing, copy editing, and formatting services for the book. At the time, CreateSpace offered author services to the authors who self-published through their platform. I actually love the cover they made for the book. The first draft of the cover they sent me had a photo of someone who looked very much like my Cyrus in the big white spot, grayish spot in the middle of the cover, which I thought was a little distracting, so I got rid of that. But then the second one, I mean, as soon as they got rid of the Miley Cyrus lookalike person, the cover was just kind of perfect. And I love the cover. I think the little DNA swirl is really cool. But I did find that their copy and line editing services were pretty lacking. They missed a lot of typos even after two passes. Even though Amazon does not have its author services anymore, I highly recommend going and finding individual people for each of these different services that you would need. Like find a line editor that you really love or find a copy editor that you really love. Look at your favorite books and see who designed their covers or find some self-published authors whose covers you really like and find out who designed their covers. Usually they'll credit the cover designer either in the inside flap or in the back of the book so you can pretty easily go and check. You can also find individual people to format your book, although I use a program called Vellum to format my books now, which is basically just an online platform where you can format the books yourself. You pay, I think it's $200 for ebook and $250 for ebook and paperback, but you only pay once and you can have that program forever. So if you plan to publish more books, investing in Vellum is way cheaper than hiring a formatter for every book. With self-publishing, it is your responsibility to make sure that the product that you are publishing looks professional. You want to publish a quality product. If your cover is good, if your blurb is good, if the inside of your book looks like an actual book and there are limited typos in the book, it's gonna help people take you seriously. If your book looks unprofessional, it really doesn't matter how much marketing you do, you wanna put your best foot forward, even if you are publishing as a teen. Take yourself seriously, and if you're gonna do this, try to do it right. And by doing it right, I don't mean that you need to hire a line editor, a copy editor, a formatter, or anything, but just be thoughtful about the way that you design your Word document yourself or design your cover yourself if you want to do that. Publishing a book does cost money. If you traditionally publish a book, your publisher will cover this cost. But if you self-publish, the cost is on you. But then you get more royalties when you sell copies of the book, which can help make up for the cost of publishing a quality product. If you are interested in how much it costs a couple of authors to self-publish their books, I will link a couple of videos in the description. I tried to find my invoices from high school, I couldn't find all of them, so I can't give you an accurate number on how much it costs to publish my book. But in the future, I will do a video breaking down the costs for my future books. Also, if you make the investment to make your book look like a quality product, you are definitely gonna sell more books, which can also help contribute to the cost of making the book a quality product. Then the fourth thing I did was publish the book. Uploading everything to KDP was pretty easy. I've linked a video below walking you through all of the steps on how to do this. There are a ton of resources out there that will help you. I'll be honest that it's been a hot second since I've done this, so I don't feel credible enough to walk you through the entire process myself right now, but I'm also gonna have to relearn this for they stay pretty soon, so I will make another video then documenting the way to do that properly. 
Every distributor and publisher has a different way that they need you to upload the book, so check in with them and make sure that you're doing it the right way. After I uploaded everything, I ordered a couple of proofs to make sure that the book looked good and the formatting looked good and then the cover looked good on the outside of the book. This is one of the printed proofs that I received from CreateSpace, and it was a proof of just the interior of the book so I could make sure that all of the chapter headings looked good, as well as just proof it for typos and stuff. Just make sure that everything looks the way that you want it to. Then the fifth thing I did was that I made a marketing plan. This kind of goes back to figuring out your goals. Because I didn't know much about marketing before publishing this book, I consulted a marketing agency to try to make a strategy as far as how I should market it. If I had known about how much information there is out there about marketing self-published books, I wouldn't have done this, but I didn't know at the time, and they helped me create my strategy. But a lot of my marketing for Imperfect centered around doing library visits, going on TV, doing radio interviews and press interviews, and reaching out to bloggers to see if they'd review the book. I'm not working with a marketing agency now, and I've learned so much from just resources online and online courses and podcasts and articles and books about how to effectively market self-published books. So that's what I recommend that you do. I would listen to podcasts, I would read books, I would join Facebook groups, watch YouTube videos, and keep your overall goals in mind as you are learning so that you can properly contextualize everything. Build a plan that makes you comfortable and will allow you to learn and don't take on too much. I'm linking a lot of the most helpful resources that I found about marketing in the description of this video. Through all of this marketing, I was able to break even on all of the costs of preparing Imperfect to be published. It was not such a success that I became a massive breakout hit. But it also didn't massively flop and it didn't brand me as the author that wrote Imperfect for the rest of my life. Some of the strategies that you will learn in these books and podcasts and YouTube videos and courses are more geared towards self-published authors that want to establish an entire career for themselves self-publishing. They might talk about running ad campaigns, doing cover reveals and title reveals and giveaways doing pre-order campaigns and social media tours, getting ARCs out to reviewers, setting up street teams. There's so much stuff out there that you can do, but just keep in mind that you don't have to do all of this. You are a teenager publishing a book. That is really freaking cool. So just do as much marketing as you want to and can. Reach out to your local library and see if you can do a book talk there. My local library was super excited when I did that and I was able to go there and do a book talk and a reading and a signing and they carried my signed book. It is still there now, and I still go back to my hometown library, very excited to see it whenever I come home. So then really the last thing that I did was that I followed through on this marketing plan. I marketed and I celebrated my accomplishment. I got to see other people read it, and I had other people write emails to me and telling me how much they enjoyed it, and I had some reviewers write these super scathing reviews that made me cry for five days. By November of that year, my sales had tapered out, and I really stopped pushing hard with marketing. I learned so much from publishing that book. I learned a lot about putting myself out there, advocating for my story, taking ownership of something I'd created. I gained a lot of confidence and I learned kind of what it's like to be an author with a book out there. How to deal when people don't actually like it and how amazing it feels when someone just understands what you are trying to do. I also got to meet multiple agents and editors and industry professionals through doing this. I got to go to conferences and say that I was a published author and I met a lot of other published authors doing this. So do I recommend publishing a book as a teen? Honestly? Yeah, but really only if you treat it as a learning experience and if you take it seriously. It's a great way to learn how publishing works and to get yourself acquainted with how to do everything. And it's good to start practicing how to do this basic marketing stuff and how to talk to people and how to connect with people because especially being an author now, that's really important. But check in with yourself and just decide whether this is something that you wanna do. Something that a lot of people told me when I told them that I was gonna publish this book is that I was gonna regret it later on in my life because the book wouldn't be as good as something that I could have written later. And this this is very true. As a piece of writing, Imperfect is not as good as my current books are and future books are going to be. Just because you get better at writing the more that you do it and the more that you practice. That being said, people did enjoy reading Imperfect, but just check in with yourself and decide whether this is something that you want to do and whether your reasons for doing it really resonate with you. You can still have an amazing career publishing later on in life if you don't publish your books in high school, but I published the book in high school and I don't regret doing it. So that's it for my general overview of how I published a book in high school. If you have any questions about the specifics of the process, leave me a comment down below and I'm happy to respond to you 
or shoot me an email and I can respond to you that way. I'm also going to be making more videos going much more in depth into different parts of this process. So give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss those when I post them. And don't forget to enter my giveaway. It is live until March 29th. Have a good week everyone and as always, happy writing.